Well, the thing all the politicians and journalists and mainstream economists worry about is government debt and what a terrible bind that puts us in for the future. So let's bring government debt into this accounting-based model and see what we get. I'm going to start with the banking sector again, so bring up its godly table. And what I'm now going to have is that the government, uh, if it spends more than it gets back in taxation and therefore runs a deficit, then it's required by laws, not by accounting, but by laws, to issue bonds equivalent to that amount of uh, new debt issued by the excess of spending over taxation plus interest on existing debt. So I'm going to have government bonds, uh, treasury bond sales here. And we now, to show that, we need a new asset for the banking sector because after they buy the bonds, then they're going to have uh, this new asset called treasury uh, bonds. And I'm going to call this bonds subscript B to indicate their bonds owned by the banking sector. Again, just for a uh, simple notation. Click anywhere outside and you now see the subscript there. Now, of course, if you buy bonds, then you're going to have extra bonds in your account. So your monetary value of the bonds you hold is going to rise. Now again, I could make this much more complicated by having numerous types of bonds for different maturities and so on, but I'm just going to stick with one type of bond here. So we now have, uh, let's say, the, I'm going to put, call this uh, bond sale. Uh, let's see. And have this from the Treasury to the banks. So the Treasury is selling bonds to the banks. Just being a bit elaborate in how I show this because it does get easy to get lost in the, um, in the logic. And you can see that uh, in, in the building table, uh, Ravel puts sale as a subscript and T to B in the superscript, which just makes it easy, easy to work out what the logic is. So that's gone up. Where's my double entry bookkeeping entry? Well, it has to come, if you look at that, the only place that the banks have control of what they can spend on, and what they can spend on is very limited in reserves, but we have to include that, is from reserves. So we're now going to have bond, and then subscript, curly brackets, sale, close curly brackets. That instructs Ravel to subscript the entire string of text, and then superscript, and then T, thing B. And that's now balanced, unless I've made a typing mistake. And that's correct. So the way that the uh, private banks pay for the bond purchases is out of their reserves. There's all sorts of complications there, which I can cover in a later video. But fundamentally, bonds are purchased for using the reserves of the banking sector. Now, the next question is, where did the reserves come from? And the answer is, they came from the excess of government spending over taxation. So as well as creating deposits, which are the money you and I use for transactions in the physical economy, this, the government excess of spending over taxation creates reserves, which are not money, they're funds. Money is something you can buy anything you want. If you want to buy you know, this mobile phone off me, you could use your bank account to do it. A bank cannot use their reserves to buy the, my mobile phone off me. They might need it at the moment, given that there's a breakdown in the banking sector, but I digress. Uh, so the reserves have got a very limited range of things they can be used to buy. Fundamentally, they can be used to buy government bonds. And why would the banks do that? The simple logic is that reserves before the financial crisis back in 2008 were non-income earning assets. They are still non-tradable. You can exchange reserves with another bank through the settlement process, but you can't trade them. Bonds, on the other hand, have always earned an interest rate and can be traded. So what is going on here is that when the Treasury sells the bonds to the private banks, the banks are being offered, to say, offered a deal which says, would you like to swap non-tradable, non-income earning assets for tradable income earning assets? The answer of any sane bank is yes, please. It's a free offer. And the reason that it's worth doing is, let's just now include this, there's interest on bonds. And uh, that's going to therefore, what does that do? Well, that's going to increase the net worth of the banking sector. So I'm going to have interest on bonds paid to banks. And I'm uh, just using superscripts and subscripts to make things a bit clearer. When I have a much more complicated model, that's interest paid to banks on bonds. And that is currently, that's increases the net worth of the banks. That's why they're willing to take the trade on. How do I balance the role? I've got to show that as also adding to reserves. 
And now we have the situation including government bond sales. Let's now see how that uh, ramifies through the rest of the system. It doesn't affect the private sector at the moment because they haven't included the private sector buying bonds, the private non-banks buying off the banks, which of course they do. Uh, but that's a, a com complication I could bring up later. Now let's now look at the central bank level. So when that uh, purchase applies, um, I've got reserves changing. Uh, if sometimes the Minsky d Rebel doesn't update fast enough. If that happens, just click the plus key and create a blank line and that will then force it to trigger. So what you've had is that uh, bond, bond sales have, been, have reduced the amount in reserves. What have they increased on this particular line? Well, the money goes to the Treasury. Well, the funds go to the Treasury. So I have bonds sale from the Treasury to the banks. So the bond sales increase the, the funds inside the Treasury's consolidated revenue fund. And interest, of course, does the opposite. Let's now have that here. So minus interest. Interest paid uh, to banks on the bonds they own comes out of the Treasury consolidated revenue fund. So that's now, that's now cascaded through to the Treasury's table. Let's open its table. And again, that hasn't quite turned up. So it hit, just hit a plus key and that will cause uh, Rabble to go through and, and make the check. And so now we have, and then I delete it because it's just a blank row. Now I have Treasury bond sales. Uh, well, they increase something. I, uh, I could try to argue they go, let's just give this a try. It's just a mistake. But I want to see what Rabble throws back to me when I make that mistake. So I could show it that way, but I'm leaving out a part of the rather important detail, and that is that the bonds are a liability of the, of the Treasury. They're an asset of the private banking sector. We can now see this up here. They have to be a liability as well. If I click on this down arrow here, I now see bonds and bank, and now that's saying, well, you've, you've made a mistake, so you should delete that row, or that, 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 uh, that uh, entry in the cell. And now it's more complete. There's only one left to go. What about interest paid on the bonds? Well, that also reduces the equity of the Treasury. It's negative equity for the Treasury. And now let's take a look at the overall situation here, back in the, the view of all, all the systems together. And I'll just move this around to give myself a bit more space on screen uh, so I can actually make it easy to see. Hang on. Let's just grab the corner. Why am I not grabbing that corner? There we go. Okay. Um, so what we have is that the interest paid to the banking sector increases the positive equity of the banking sector, just like the excess of spending over taxation increases the equity of the non-bank private sector. So is this really borrowing money? Okay. Is the government borrowing money or what is it really doing? When you take a look at the overall effect, the, the main thing you see is here on the treasuries uh, of the central banks, pardon me, uh, its godly table, because if you only had spending minus taxation and spending exceeded taxation, then there'd be only a negative uh, entries into this account, which would ultimately force it into a negative amount, meaning an overdraft. So the reason that banks, that the government sell bonds is they have past laws which prevent them from allowing the treasuries consolidated revenue fund to be negative, to go into an overdraft. And what the bond sales do, combined with taxation, is give you positive entries that can't that balance out the spending and the interest payments. So the main effect of the government issuing the bonds is to avoid the Treasury's consolidated revenue fund going negative. Now, uh, there's only one more thing I need to add to make a, a moderately complete model of the very basics of government money creation, and that is that I don't yet have any assets shown for the banking, for the for the central banks. Now we know the central bank buys and sells bonds on the secondary market. Again, the laws that governments have passed don't allow the central bank to buy bonds on the primary market. And I'll show what that looks like in the, in the next video if they were actually allowed to do that. So if the trip for the central bank, therefore, if it wants to have the bonds, has to buy them off the private banks. That when the, when the central bank sets an interest rate to be paid, they then, uh, as well as declaring that's the interest rate to be paid on government bonds. They also buy and sell bonds on the market to make sure that the market demanded price is within plus or minus half a percent of the actual target rate. So I'll, I'll show that detail in the next video.